thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence. We don't take it lightly. A high price was paid, Lord, that we could be in your presence. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. That we would lift them back to you in adoration. Give you glory, Lord. Help us to understand you that way. Help us to understand you that way, I pray. That we would see you for your beauty and for your work. The agape love. That we would see you for your work, oh Lord, I pray. Thank you. Your work. The angels bow before you. Heaven and earth adore you. The elders grow their crown in this room. Help your church, Lord. Help your bride, oh Lord, breathe on her. Yes. Breathe fresh with your Holy Spirit upon your God. I now breathe with the Lord. Thy fuller soul, O oh Lord God, remove her blemishes, O oh Lord God, every spot. Prepare her for your return, O oh Lord, I pray. Send your revival fire, O oh Lord God, making your people, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord God, forgive us for a spirit of complacency in the name of Jesus. Set us on fire for you, Lord. Help us, Lord God, we want to fall in love with you, Lord. Amen. We're going to be in Romans chapter 5 tonight. Amen. You love the Word of God? I hope you do. I love the Word of God. It was the Word of God that changed everything for me, i got to tell you. I'll never be sorry for, for spending time on His Word, the Holy Scriptures. It's the only truth we have in physical form upon this earth. Amen. Before we move forward in, in Romans chapter 5, I just want to uh, I want to go backwards a little bit. I'm, uh, I'm seeing more clearly than ever before this theme of righteousness within the book of Romans. Um, going backwards just real quick, you know, if you, if you want to try to, to, to put it up there quickly, you can, but it's not that important because I'm going to move fast. In Romans chapter 1 verse 16, the apostle Paul said, I am not ashamed of of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation uh, to them which believe, to the Jew first, but also to the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed. He'd go on into chapter 2 and he would begin to explain that people were storing up for themselves wrath because they were ignoring the word of God. They weren't responding properly to God. They weren't obeying the truth of God. And because of that, that they were beginning to store up for themselves God's righteous judgment. Okay, but then in chapter 3, he introduces to us who righteousness is. And we learn in chapter 3 that righteousness has a name and his name is Jesus. Amen. And that we, we, we also begin to understand that, that not only is his name Jesus, he's a person, but, but that Jesus also, we were able to receive God's righteousness through faith in Jesus Christ. And that it all comes through the shedding of his blood. That there, the word redemption was used, which means to be bought back. Amen. And then in chapter 4, we spent quite a bit of time of showing the difference between what well, we, we at least wrote it out in Greek only for the purpose of being able to see the similarities between the word righteousness and the word justification. Y'all remember that? You may not remember what those words meant, but the word righteousness describes our standing with God once we've put our faith in Christ. Now, now we've become righteous because, and I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because we've got to get it out of chapter 5, but that, that 
we've been given the righteousness of Jesus. That's what it actually said, that faith results in righteousness. But look, we didn't really have time to get into a lot about Abraham. And I really I love to preach on Abraham because it's just the most powerful, magnificent type of the Old Testament of God's plan of salvation. You got to try to wrap your mind around the reality that Abraham was 2000 B.C., so 2,000 years before Jesus was ever born, God gave a promise to Abraham. You know, maybe it's important that we would at least introduce this thought real quick because when we get into Romans chapter, you know, 7, 8, 9, it's going to be important that we understand this, that God gave the promise of righteousness to Abraham before he was circumcised. Now, the reason that that's important is that we understand that he's the father of the faith. He's the father of, of both Jew and Gentile. The children, of, uh, the children of Abraham are those that believe. Amen. Those that believe by faith have, from every tongue, tribe, and nation have been made one with God, have been given the, the gift of righteousness, if you will, because of faith in Christ. Amen. And so it's important that we understand that because the, the Jewish mind thinks that it was really all about them. But no, the promise was given to Abraham before he was ever circumcised, really hundreds of years before the nation of Israel ever even existed. And so the promise of Abraham is that he would is that righteousness would be given and, and, and that God was going to create a seed through Abraham. Amen. He said, he, he said, come out of your father's house in Genesis 12 and I'm going to make you a nation. He said, I'll bless those who, who bless you, curse those who curse you and through you in you and in other places in your seed, all nations of the earth will be blessed. We learn in Galatians 3 that that seed, it wasn't plural, but it was, it was singular. That seed was Christ. So ultimately the plan of God, and we know this, Peter says it too, that before the foundations of the earth, Jesus was the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. God in his sovereignty, God in his omniscience, God in his omnipotence knew that when he created Lucifer, the angel, that the, that the angel was going to fall. He knew when he created Adam upon the earth that Adam was going to give into, into this fallen angel and he knew that the entirety of the human race was going to be born into the image and likeness of Adam with a sinful nature but good news he had a plan already in advance and the plan was a lamb hallelujah that was slain before the foundations of the earth amen in his name he became manifest he was the seed of Abraham because through Abraham God created a nation called Israel and through Israel he gave his son amen. Jesus amen Praise God. To be a child of Abraham is a beautiful thing. Amen. And so tonight when we get into these. So we. So but let me just say this. So people will say, yeah, OK, so faith, you know, would you not agree to some extent that faith can be kind of like an, a little bit of an abstract thought? What do you mean by abstract preacher? I mean, I've said this before. Some of you people are, y'all are getting tired of my stories, but. My mom, my mom was a painter, and she didn't paint concrete type art. She painted abstract art. So I always liked abstract art. And sometimes you you can look at it, and you can tell what it is, but sometimes you got to kind of think about it. You got to kind of really like look at it in order to be able to process it. And sometimes just the concept of faith. Sometimes it seems to be abstract. Like I can put faith in God, right? But what does that really mean? To because without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Yes, right. Amen. Uh, but I want you to know we don't really have time to get into this. But I want you to know Abraham had his faith in something very concrete, something very definite. Abraham had his faith in Jesus. And people would question, well, how in the world did Abraham have his faith in Jesus 2,000 years before Jesus would ever be born? How in the world can you preach such a thing? And I'm here to tell you that, that in Galatians, we learn in Galatians chapter 3, that God foreseeing that he would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel in advance to Abraham. The good news. Now, I got to tell you something else. And I mean, most of the many people in, our, in this church have heard this. Uh, but maybe some of you have it that whenever Jesus had a, an encounter with the Pharisees in John chapter 8 verse 56 and, and this is what Jesus said he, they, they said so are you more are you greater than our father Abraham 
And Jesus said this, before Abraham was, I am. Hallelujah. Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. Yes. That word rejoice literally describes, I've tried to do it before, but I'm getting a little older, so I'm not going to do it. Where he, would, he was twirling around in, in exaltation and rejoicing. And it's important that we talk about this because, see, back whenever in Romans 4, we didn't really have time to get into it. It says that Abraham hoped. Is that against all hope, Abraham hoped. Sometimes whenever you don't see what it is that you expect to see, you and I need to learn how to be able to hope even whenever it doesn't look like there's any hope. Because you see, God had promised Abraham that he would have, he would be the father of many nations. Amen. And that, and listen, this is the plan of God, my friend. You got to understand this. We're going to get into it in a few weeks whenever we get into Revelation 17. But I'm here to tell you, God's got a plan. From every tongue, tribe, and nation. He said, He said, you better kiss the sun, Psalm chapter 2. He said to the sun, I will give you the nations as your inheritance. He says in Revelation, I believe it's chapter 3, he says that to those that overcome, he will, he will give you the nations. You will rule the nations with him because you're a co-heir with him. It says in Revelation 5 that the lamb is worthy to open the seals because he has redeemed the souls of men back to God with his blood from every tongue, tribe, and nation. Abraham the father of, all nation, of many nations. Those that are of faith are the children of Abraham. Amen. Those that are of faith in the plan of God. It says, Abraham saw my day. He saw it and rejoiced. There was many times I believe that Abraham saw the day of God, but there's no better day than Genesis chapter 22 day. Whenever the scripture teaches us that Abraham laid wood on the lad's back. A supernatural birth. Abraham was 99. Sarah was 90. There wasn't no hope left. Against all hope. Abraham hoped. And he, he said, he said, God, you promised me that I was going to be the father of many nations, that you were going to give me a seed, and all the only seed I have in my house is this Eliezer, my servant. No, Eliezer's not going to be your seed. Then Abraham takes matters into his own hands. How, do, how often do we do that? And he decides to produce Ishmael, a work of the flesh. No, no, not in Ishmael won't be your seed. No, in Isaac shall this out of this time, I believe it says next year, out of Sarah, Isaac will be your seed. Amen. And now the promise comes. <laughs> the promise is finally here. Now the father tells him, take your son, your only son, and I will show you a mountain. And there you will offer him against all hope, Abraham hope. Because it says it in Romans chapter 4, it says that he knew good and well that God was able to keep his promise and that God was able to bring that boy back from the dead. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, we talk a lot about the cross in this church because let me tell you something. He said, this is my body. It shall be broken for you. This is the blood of the new covenant. It shall be shed for you. Without the shedding of his blood, there is no new covenant. That's right. But let me tell you something. The resurrection is so important. The resurrection is so important because you see, you got to be able to believe like Abraham did. You got to be able to believe in the God that calls those things that be not as though they are. You got to be able to believe in the God that causes dead things to live. Because see, if you can't believe in the resurrection of our Lord, if you right, then you haven't come to true faith. Romans chapter ten says it. It says that you got to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that not only listen that He rose from the dead. And I'm telling you, when you truly get saved, when you are truly converted, you're going to know the resurrection is real. Because guess what? The the life of Jesus is going to be on the inside of you. Come on in, brother. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, one of your pops. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Somebody open it. We in church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Resurrection power. Against all hope, he hoped. Amen? Amen. Faith. Faith in Christ. Amen. And so, so whenever we get into Romans, I, I didn't want to leave that out because look, man, 
It's so important that we have faith and that we believe in this. Man, the resurrection power of God. I love Philippians. It says being made conformable unto his death and, that, and, and being connected to the power of his resurrection. The, you know, one of the things I'm starting to believe is that the more Matt Bear dies and gets out the way, the more the resurrection power of God's going to be able to flow in him, out of him, through him. Amen. <laughs> God, you move Matt out the way so that so that Jesus can 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 have his day. Move Matt out the way so Jesus can have his day. And it doesn't just go for the preacher, my friend. It goes for each and every one of us in here. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Any man want to follow after me, he's going to have to deny himself, pick up his cross daily. Yes. He's going to have to die daily to the to, to self and flesh. And that's why the word of God is so important so that we can understand the heart of God. Amen. That the living word would enter in and would reveal to us his, his truth and his hope. Amen? Amen. Praise God. All right. So in Romans chapter 5, verses, let's just go ahead and read verses 1 through 3. And I'm in the ESV version. Is that what you mean? Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. Wow. What a powerful word. So the word justified again, being justified by faith, and that's I really want to kind of there's a, there's a few ver, there's a few phrases I want to point out out of out of verses one and two, and and the first phrase is justified by faith. The second one is peace with God. The third one is access by faith, and the fourth one is into this grace, and the fifth one is in which we stand. So if I I title tonight access access into grace, access to grace. Amen. And, and so what, what I want you to know is, is that therefore being justified by faith. I want you to know that the word is past tense. The phrase is past. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith. Now, how were you justified? Well, you like Abraham put faith. You know, that's the beauty of the story. I didn't finish it. But Abraham listened to the father. He laid wood on the lad's back, the Bible says in Genesis 22. Brought him up the mountain. The, 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 and, you know, scholars would tell you that he was really more like a young man is what he was. It wasn't like just some little boy. It was more like a young man. And he said, Father, I see I see the fire. I see the, I can't remember exactly what I said out there. I see the wood. I see the fire. Where's the sacrifice? He said, the Lord will provide himself a sacrifice, son. And he get up there and he ties him down. And he's about ready to thrust the knife in the boy's heart. And then all of a sudden, the, the angel of the Lord stays the hand of Abraham. And there was a ram caught in the thicket. And the name of that place became known as Jehovah Jireh. Wow. The, one of the names of God, like Brother Borg was talking about, Jehovah Jireh. We used to sing a song, Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Praise God. The God, the provider. God's here. God will provide for your needs. Amen. God will provide a healing in your body, a healing in your heart, a healing in your mind. He will. He, you got financial problems. He'll bring healing to your finances. But he can't do none of that uh, other than the fact that he provided a lamb on that day. God provided a ram. He provided a sacrifice. Amen. And, and it was a type and a foreshadowing of the fact that God was going to provide his only son. You see, a father with a supernatural son, amen, that offered him up. I, I, I can't prove it, and this is my commentary. I always like to let you know, I believe there was a, uh, I don't know if the right word would be a soliloquy. That's usually when one person speaks to himself. But, but I believe there was a one-on-one -on -one conversation between God and Abraham. You don't have to do it, son, because that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to offer my only begotten unique son that's going to be born of me and I'm going to offer him for the sins of the world yes. and I'm going to allow him to be a sacrifice because the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
I hope you got Jesus in your heart tonight, my friend. He paid a high price for you to be saved. Amen. And he wants to he wants to grow in you and he wants to love on you. He wants to teach you his ways. Amen. I want him to teach me his ways. I want to be like Jesus. Praise God. So therefore, past tense, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. So the word justified again is, is the declaration. You remember that? We talked about it last week. Righteousness is the standing. Justification is the declaration. What does that mean? It means when God the Father looks at you, if you've been saved, if you've been converted, you, that means you've been clothed with the righteousness of Jesus. Amen. So when the Father looks at you now, he doesn't see you and your your birth in Adam. He doesn't see your failures. You got to get this. This is so powerful if you can get a revelation of this. Because see, the devil wants to whisper in your ear and he wants to tell you you're unworthy and he wants to make you feel full of guilt and he wants to riddle you with hopelessness. And I'm here to tell you that your righteousness is not based on your actions. Amen. That's right. It's not. It's all based on Jesus and what he did. Amen. And if you could get that revelation first, what will end up happening is, is that you're going to get access to grace. And see, the grace of God is going to start moving and operating in your life. And he's going to start setting you free in areas that you can never be free in. And that no, 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 no man can fix it. No, no sit down on the couch can fix it. No medicine can fix it. Only Jesus can really bring healing deep, deep, deep down in our heart. He says, he says, so, but, but look, in order to be able to have access to, to, to faith, by faith, we have to, first we have to be justified by faith, right? Clothed in his righteousness. And this gives us peace with God. Peace with God. You know, the scripture teaches that before we were in Christ, that we didn't have peace with God, but that instead we were at enmity with God. Can you put Romans chapter eight, verse seven up there? Moving forward a little bit fast. Can you can you do me a favor? Can you switch over to the King James real quick? <laughs> I like this word. It's an old English word. Look at this. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. The carnal mind, that's the opposite of the mind of Christ. Amen. You know, before Christ, you can't have the mind of Christ. Once you get saved, hallelujah, the, the word of God teaches that you and I have been given the mind of Christ. The problem that we run into is that we don't know who we are in Christ. We don't know what Christ has done for us. And so we tend to still operate as believers. And again, it can happen. We still operate with a carnal mindset instead of, a, instead of the mind of Christ. But the, but the carnal mind is at enmity with God. The mind that cannot believe that God did the work that needed to be done to set us free is that enmity with God. The carnal mind that won't yield to the will of God. Listen, listen to me, church. We, we cannot continue to live our lives any old way that we want to. That's right. You've been bought with a price. You're not your own. That's right. your, your, your body has become the temple of the living God. Our carnal mind wants to still live in the flesh. Wants to still entice the passions of the flesh. I'm here to tell you right now, we, we're without excuse. Because Jesus, not only did he die so we could go to heaven because of the righteousness of Jesus, but that's what we're about to get into. He also died so that we can have access to grace. Amen. And grace is changing us. Amen. Grace, grace will heal us. Listen, grace, grace will do things for you you can't even imagine. It's a change agent. <laughs> It, it's not just it's not just that you're forgiven it, it, it's the power of the Holy Spirit moving and working in your life the very thing that you feel in your mind right now that you'll never be able to get free from is a lie from the pit of hell I'm here to tell you as a matter of fact the scripture teaches that you're already free Amen. I got good news for you. You're already free. You just might not know it yet. That's why you need the mind of Christ. The word of God says you're free. Free, free, free indeed. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. So because you have peace with God, you can go back to Romans 5 now. Because you have peace with God, we can have the peace of God. Amen. Amen. Listen. 
you never know what life is going to bring. The scripture talks about the suffering. We just read it earlier. It says we glory also in suffering. That's the ESV version. The, the King James says we glory in tribulation. We have a problem in the modern church and especially the American church. We don't understand anything about suffering. We don't understand anything about persecution. Listen, I know my brother said it the other day. No, it's not our fault. We're Americans. I agree. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God I, I was born in America. And I mean that. Amen. But listen to me, my friend. We done got spoiled in America. They got they, they, other people. They, they've experienced the suffering and the persecution of being a, a believer, of being a true believer. And and listen, you, you and I need to understand that that to going through the suffering with the grace of God strengthening us helps to teach us endurance. Yes. Many times people want to give up and quit. They don't believe that Jesus works. I'll never forget. And I've told the story before one time, and I don't know if Aaron really remembers, but we were out on Bourbon Street with Lance Rao carrying a cross out there. And so I, I was listening to Aaron's conversation with this guy. And the guy said, man, I tried Jesus. He, Je Aaron said, try Jesus? Jesus is in a pair of shoes. You don't try him on and then throw him in the closet because you think he doesn't fit right. No, you don't try Jesus. You, you surrender to Jesus. You die to yourself and you let Jesus have his way in your heart and in your life. And when the times get tough, hallelujah, what they used to say, the tough get going. No, when the times get tough, we start dying. We learn how to die in Christ. All right. Praise God. So because we have peace with God, we have the peace of God. And so what I wanted to say is, is this, is that. You never know what life's gonna, what curveball life's gonna throw you. And I want you to know that Jesus brings a peace that surpasses understanding. The letter to the Philippian church says. The Bible says that he is the prince of peace. Amen. He, he comes after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek, king, Melch means king, Zedek, righteousness, who was the king of Salem, which is ancient Jerusalem. Salem is shalom, which means peace. Jesus comes from the order of the priesthood of Melchizedek. He's the king of righteousness, and he is the king of peace. And if you and I let him come into the, our surroundings, amen, he will bring peace even in the midst of chaos. Yes. But many times we haven't learned how to trust him in that way. And while it's while it's things are easy and everything's going right, then sometimes we don't have to learn how to trust in that. Yes. But no matter what you're going through, my friend, I want you to know he'll get you through. No matter what. No, 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 no. You, you're not. I don't. You're not here. No matter what. No matter what the future holds, he brings a peace that surpasses understanding. Praise God. Sometimes I read that stuff about those martyrs and sometimes I wish I wouldn't because then I just sit there and I, sometimes I think about it. Okay, I'm not going to do that to you. Right? There was one I heard, one story, I can't remember his name. They, they, they ripped his skin off and then they made him put, wear it. No, that was one of your brothers. He's in the cloud of witnesses, my friend. Yeah, there's a great cloud of witnesses that has gone before us and he's in that cloud. He said, that because there's such a cloud of witnesses, let us not grow faint. Let us lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily besets us. And let us run the race. Amen. Help us, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. See, that's what I'm trying to say, though, is that if he could be given grace in that situation. If the Apostle Paul knows in advance when he's writing 2 Timothy that his time is short. He said it. He said, my time is short, Timothy. When you come, would you bring me a couple of things? Bring the papyruses, I think. Read the scripture. And, and could you bring a cloak? When you come, it's kind of cold down here in this dungeon. He said, my, I've run the race. I've finished the race. The time is at hand. Church tradition says that there Nero put him on the chopping block and there his head was removed from his body. But the Apostle Paul, tell me he didn't have peace. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for peace with God. 
so that we can have the peace of God. Amen. Amen. And, and praise God, it, may, it ain't got to be that bad tomorrow when we wake up and go to work. It just might be one of our workers, you know, somebody we work with trying to get on our nerves and trying to cause chaos and turmoil in our spirit, right? He bring peace in that. Amen. We need to learn how to let some of this stuff go, my friend, right? Help me out, somebody. Amen. We don't war against flesh and blood, the scripture says. Right. But against principalities, against world rulers, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Praise God for the armor of God. Amen. Jesus. Clothe ourselves in Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. So because we have peace with God, we have access by faith. And the word access literally means the act of bringing somewhere or admission. You know, you got to have a, you got to, you, you got to have, I, I need access by faith into this grace. So in order to get in order to get into this grace, you gotta have access. I need a ticket of admission to get in here. Well, you got a ticket. It's been given to you. The gift is Jesus. The, the price has been paid. Amen. Jesus purchased the ticket for you. He purchased your admission with his blood. Amen. Amen. So you've been given access by grace. Amen. And look, one of the definitions I used to use. One of the definitions of grace, and many people in the church are familiar with it, is that it's a divine influence in the heart and its reflection in the life. In other words, it's an inside job, Amen. right? It's not just forgiveness. It's an inside job. It's Amen. the moving and operation of the Holy Spirit. That, like, Remember at in the end of Romans chapter 2, we learned about a circumcision of the heart. Peter talked about it too. It's a circumcision not with the hands of man, but it's by the Spirit of God. Where, where the heart uh, is, is circumcised. Now, I'm sorry, it's actually Colossians that talks about that. Where the heart of man, where it's circumcised by the Spirit of God. Amen. So the grace of God. So when we say it's a divine influence on the heart. You understand divine is God, right? Amen. Influence on the heart and it's reflection in the life. That means he starts to change you to the point where it becomes reflected outwardly. Yeah. That means the things that used to get you riled up and make you lose your temper and act like you used to act, right. you ain't acting like that. Right. Amen? Amen? You start to catch on. See, Paul said this. He said, we're not ignorant of his devices. Yeah. <laughs> Again, when, when we start growing up in maturity, we become less ignorant of the devices of our enemy. And he's been pushing the same old button all them years. <laughs> and he's still getting the same old response out of him. He didn't even have to change his bait. He just kept pressing the same old button. We didn't like the little robot. We just keep falling in the same old trap. But good news, good news. Hallelujah. Amen. That, that it, we're not ignorant of his devices. Amen. Amen. And, and, and so this grace brings, it does an inside job. But look, this is another definition of the spiritual, spiritual condition of one governed by the power of divine grace. The spiritual condition of one governed by by the power of divine grace. Man, grace is so powerful yes. and so good. Yes. It's changing things in your life. Amen. It's the power of God moving in you. The power of God moving through you. So powerful. Thank you, Jesus. So this is a grace in which we stand. It makes us immovable. It makes us firm. It establishes us. That no matter what we're going through, if we will hold on to Jesus, we will grow in Christ, amen, and we will, he will give us the grace that we need to stand firm. Amen. Having done all you can do, stand. <clears throat> amen. Stand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Yes. All else is sinking sand. Amen. I'm going to stand on the rock which is Jesus. Praise God. Without his grace, we ain't doing nothing. I don't care how tough a preacher wants to make, wants to think he is, or how tough a Christian wants to think he is, or how much we think we know. Without the grace of the power of the Holy Spirit moving and operating in our life, we're not going to be able to stand in the face of, of times. We're going to fall short of the glory of God. Lord, we don't want to fall short. We want to, we want to give you glory and honor. He's worthy. Amen. Amen. I know I was on, a, I was on quite the. Preached that for quite a while about the glory of God. And I've even said something here recently, a few weeks back, about the fact that, you know, whenever the Father in heaven, he looks to his right, who does he see? He sees his precious son. He sees his wounded son. He bears the wounds in his body, my friend. 
nail scarred hands, nail scarred feet, wound in his side. He bears those wounds and he sees he ever liveth to make intercession for you. I'm not going to say he doesn't pray. I don't know exactly what that means, but I know one thing. He's my intercession. He's my mediator. He's my go-between. And the, that wounded body right there, he doesn't really even have to say a whole lot. The Father looks and he sees. Amen. Amen. Uh, praise God. And I just want you to know that he's, he's there for us. Amen. So he gives us this grace in which we stand. All right, now, going into verse 3 of Romans chapter 5, <coughs> it says this. It says, because it, it says at the end of verse 3, I'm, yeah, at the end of verse 3, it says, an endurance, uh, not only, I'm sorry, it says um, at the end of verse 2. At the end of verse 2, it says, we, we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. You know, there's some good things promise to you. I don't serve the Lord just because of what's going to happen to me in the end, but I'm telling you right now, I hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love. <laughs> the glory of God, listen to me, my friend. God has a, God called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. He transferred you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. That's just the beginning. Listen, that's just the beginning. Amen. You need to get filled up with the Holy Ghost and you need to let the Holy Spirit start moving in you and moving through you. He's got a plan for your life. Amen. And, and it's to yield to him, to live for him, to exalt him, to give him glory and honor. That's where I was going earlier. He looks in heaven. He just has to look at the right hand of where he's sitting and he sees his <laughs> glorious son. He wants to look on the earth and to see his son down here. He wants to see the glory of Jesus manifest in your heart and in your life and in my heart and in my life. That I would be, Paul said, and I keep saying it, that I, he, Paul said, I travail until Christ be formed in you. Romans chapter 8, verse 29, that we would be fashioned into the image of Christ. Amen? The Holy Spirit is forming and fashioning us on the potter's will. Praise God. Have your way with us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So that we would stand immovable, made firm. All right. So but look what it says that we, that we, character, I'm sorry, that we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. There's hope in the future. There's hope. You don't have to be scared. The scripture says in Hebrews chapter 2 that, that he, he descended past the angels. That's what it's saying in the Greek. He descended past the angels so that he could redeem Abraham's offspring. He took upon himself flesh and blood. He became flesh and blood because the children were partakers of the same. That means Jesus clothed himself in flesh and blood because you and I were flesh and blood. So he could become our brother for the purpose that he would be able to die for us to redeem us. Because, and it says this, that he, he set us free. He took back from the devil the power of death. The power over the fear of death. You have nothing to fear in death, my friend. Amen. Your last breath here means your first breath there. Yes. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yes. And, to, and to be able to enter into his, into his glory. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we, we glory in the hope of God. But then he says this in, chapter, in verse 3. He says, but not only that, we also rejoice in our sufferings. And the King James says tribulation. And he says, we glory, we, we also rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. The King James says perseverance. And endurance or perseverance produces experience. The ESV says character and character produces hope. Sufferings, tribulations, the word tribulation means to be pressed. Yeah, I, I know I've, I've taught this for a long time, but I just can't. It's really good. Y'all know what, some of y'all know, but the word Gethsemane, y'all know what that means? Yes. Say it. The pre it means the olive press, right? It, it, it was on the Mount of Olives. It was on the Mount of Olives in the Garden of Gethsemane, I guess, is where the press used to be. I don't know if it's still there. I buy olive oil, I might pass that way. Oh, that's a good reason. My Muslim friend. <laughs> Spark up another conversation. 
But the word Gethsemane for the garden literally means the olive press. The king of the fruit of God being pressed in the garden. See, whenever you get pressed, whatever's in you is going to come out of you. Right? What was in Jesus when he was getting pressed? What came out of him? That precious blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. That precious blood that washes white as snow. And when we get pressed, though, sometimes that's not what comes out to pray, but that's what we want to come out. Amen? And he will do it. He will do it in us. And so that's what the word, that's what the word tribulation means. And look, there's a couple, Jesus said this in John 16 and 33. He said, in this world, you will have tribulation. It's not a matter of whether it's going to happen or not. There might be some preachers that got a problem with that, but I got a problem with them. Jesus said, I'm going to listen to Jesus. In this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. You're, he made you an overcomer. No, I'm sorry. He made you more than a conqueror through Christ Amen. who loved you and he died. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 13, verse 21 says this, because when we're talking about tribulation, it says right here, yet he has no root in himself, but he endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. You see, the enemy... And the Lord, will, the Lord will allow some things to take place because He's always putting us to the test. Faith has to be tested. There's a lot of people, that, there's a lot of us starting with Pastor Matt, we call ourselves Christian. The word Christian, they were first called Christian in Antioch, it means to be Christ-like. Listen, if you're going to be Christ-like, you're going to be tested. If you think the Son of God, when He showed up on here, He said I, that He came from the Father, amen, and that no man knows the Father except the Son that was in the bosom of the Father, and the enemy's over there like, oh, really? That's another thing, too. Like, we think that we're not going to be tested and that God's not going to allow us to be tested, knowing that God allowed His only unique, one and only Son that was begotten of the Father to be tested. Matter of fact, he allowed him to be tested to show us that in Christ we can endure the test. Amen. Amen. You're not going to endure no test against the devil. I used to say that all the time. I was like, you know, daddy used to tell me, pull yourself up by the bootstraps, boy. But they, they ain't going to win this fight like that, daddy. You're not going to take this thing down like that. I don't care how tough you are. There's only one way. It's learning how to die. It's learning how to surrender. It's learning not independence, but dependence. Amen. Lest you come unto me as a little child, Amen. you cannot enter in. Teach me what it means to be a child in the spirit, Lord. To, to truly trust in you and depend on you and to become humble of heart. Amen. Amen. If we can come to him as a child, he's not going to cast us out, my friend. Amen. He's not going to cast us out. He says, suffer not the little children. Let them come unto me. He loves a child. He loves the heart of a child. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So he said, in this world you will have tribulation. But he said that those that are about enduring, you know, praise God, we want to be able to endure. And, and, and that's the next word is endurance or patience. It says, it says that we rejoice in sufferings knowing that the suffering produces endurance. The tribulation produces endurance. That word endurance, a lot of a lot of people, again, that have been here a while, and this is how I always taught it in the past, because I learned it from Brother Larson, that I remember I was sitting inside, I don't really know why this is important, but I was sitting inside my in-law's kitchen, sitting at that old table, listening to listening to Brother Larson and I'll never forget it when he said that it hit me so hard this word endurance in the Greek is hupomone and this word is you know the Greek language is made up of compound words and this is a preposition and this preposition means under and this word here means remain yeah. Under, remain. 
That's the most literal way you could say it. Under, remain. Remain under the trial in a God-honoring way. See, true believers, we have to learn how to, we have to learn how to go through the trial in a God-honoring way. How do we go through the trial in a God-honoring way? Because we understand that we've been justified by faith. Meaning you're righteous because you put your faith in what Christ has done, which gives you access to grace in which you stand. It's not you doing it. It's not us going back to our old way of life whenever things aren't working and we got chaos in our life and we're lacking peace. And so we go back to whatever we used to go to in order to try to quiet quiet the chaos. Come on, somebody. Help me out here. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it, 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 well, Pastor Matt, I know you hadn't really drank and got, you know, long, it's been a long time. Praise God. But guess what? You can get lost in Netflix. Come on, somebody. Help me out here. How you know, preacher? No, you ain't got to ask me that. Right? How you know? Because you can get lost up in a fantasy land and you just kind of escapism of some sort. Well, you're not really dealing with it. You're just kind of like blocking it out. And I'm here to tell you that you're wasting time with the Lord. I'm here to encourage you to let you know that if you are truly converted tonight, hallelujah, you've been given the gift of righteousness. His name is Jesus. There's a legal declaration that's been spoken over your life that you are no longer guilty. You're innocent. And because of that, you have access to grace in which you stand. And this grace of God will, will empower you and give you the equipment, the anointing that you need to remain under the trial in a God-honoring way. Yes. To where you don't have to be like, look, look it's been a long time. Danielle will tell you it's been a long time since I found something. Huh? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. It's been a long time. Uh, yeah, I know. That's okay. Y'all can judge me. <laughs> Poor thing. She had a whole clown collection. <laughs> anyway, let's not get into that. That was a long time ago. But I know, I'm sorry. Had a problem. I had a problem, but guess what? The grace of God. When you begin to learn the word of God and you begin to submit to the will of God, his work, just don't give up on the Lord. Because he's never going to give up on you. Hold on to him and let him have his way. And he's going to start to work in you. And you can now remain under in a God-honoring way. God will give you the grace and the strength that you need. And he will change you. Amen. Yes. Who likes feeling like that? No, I'm talking about when you're so mad that you feel like cussing somebody out or throwing something at somebody. Who likes that? Come on. I don't like feeling that way. It's just a lot of turmoil. The devil trying to get all up in my stuff, man. I don't want to get, I don't want to let the devil get that. No. All right. So, so we're going to remain under. Hey, look, let's look at the Colossians chapter one real quick. Verses 10 through 12. Colossians one. All right. Let's just read it. So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Yes. Praise God. That's yes. important. Yes. I mean, we can talk all day long. You, you got, we got to talk, but do we have to walk, right? Walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, pleasing, fully pleasing Him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge yes. of God. Next verse. May you be strengthened with all power according to His glorious might. For all endurance and patience with joy. Just leave it right there for a second. Go back. All endurance and patience with joy. That's the same word Amen. that's there. They're using two words to describe it. Endurance and patience in the midst of the trial. Through his, through the power of his glorious might. You can't do this in your own strength. He keeps trying to tell us this over and again. That if we would learn to yield to him. If we would learn to trust him in the midst of the trials. He will give us the strength that we need. And he will give us the power that we need to endure. And to be patient in the trials of life with joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. Right. Praise God. What is that? Verse 11. Can you put it on 12? It says, uh, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you. Look at that, man. That's so powerful. Amen. 
Thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. You can't listen. Don't go back to Romans 5 too fast on that. You, you need to sink that in your head right there. Come on, somebody. Chew on that. Thanks to the Father who has qualified you. How did you get qualified? Was it you? Did you do something good enough to make yourself by Jesus? It's the blood of Jesus. It's the same thing over and again. Oh, you talk so much about the blood. You ain't got nothing but the blood. You ain't got nothing but the blood. You by yourself. Look, your righteousnesses are filthy rags, my friend. As soon as you think you got something figured out, you're going to fall flat on your face. Pride comes, then the fall. That's what the Word of God says. But I will give thanks. I give you thanks, Father, Holy Father. <laughs> we need to learn how to thank Him. Amen. We need to learn how to have a heart of gratitude, a heart of humility to the Father, considering what He did in giving us His Son. Y'all agree with that? Amen. I mean, sometimes we say we got it, but sometimes maybe we don't have it. Lord, give it to us. Yeah. Right? Thanks to the Father, He qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in life. Yeah. Lord only knows what that even means. And it's not just for tomorrow, it's for today. Yeah. He's given us an inheritance today. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. He says, he says to learn how to endure. And he says this. He says that, that, the, that this endurance produces character. So, so, you know, character, some people have defined character in a simple way to say it's what goes on when nobody else is looking, right? <laughs> the Greek word comes from this word dokimos. I'm not going to even spell it. I'm just going to throw it. <laughs> now, what dokimos was, and I used to use a bad, this is probably a bad illustration to talk about like the Bible. But in the old world, and they used to, okay, whenever people were selling stuff, they would cut it. Okay? That, th these dokimos, you know what these people were? They were coin. They were people that exchanged coins. They didn't have paper money back in the day, and the metal was soft. And so what they would do is they would shave the metal, shave the metal off of a coin, shave that off to the side, shave the metal off a coin, shave, shave that off to the side, shave the metal till you had enough metal, and then you you could you could smith another coin, and then you're making money by cutting people out of what really belongs to them. And so so what happened was is that a doki mine became the person that could be trusted. He was proven. You could do business with this guy. He wasn't gonna. He wasn't gonna take advantage of you. If if you, if you exchanged money with him, you were getting the proper weight of the coin. And that's what he's trying to say is that is that listen. Whenever you and I understanding we are justified by faith and we have access into this grace in which we stand, that even though we're going through trial and tribulation and we're facing things, what's happening is this, is that God's teaching us endurance. And as this endurance is taking place, character is being produced in us. What character? Better human character? No, the character of Jesus. Amen. And now, you know, you're starting to learn and you're starting to operate with the mind of Christ. And you know right from wrong. <clears throat> I'm not supposed to answer that person that way. I'm not supposed to do that. Yes. Amen. Because, the, because I've been in the word of God. Right, a, worker, a, 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 a person that rightly divides the word of truth. He need not be ashamed. Amen. Amen. And the spirit of God through the word of God is, is showing me the truth of God. And that I'm not doing the things that are wrong. By the grace of God. Amen. Yes. It's not legalism. Praise God. All right. And then character produces hope. Because see, if you and I can begin to believe the word of God for what it says, for the way it's written, we would see it transform our lives. Amen. I'm telling you right now, ain't, listen, whatever you think you're going through, whatever you think you can't get victory over, that's a lie from the pit of hell. I'm here to tell you right now, the Lord will heal you transform you. He will heal your mind. He will heal your emotions. He wants to heal your soul. Amen. He wants to heal your mind, your will, and your emotions. He wants to heal the way you think. He wants to heal the way you feel. He wants to heal the way what you want. <laughs> he wants to change the desires of your heart from your own desires to his desires. He wants to change your will into his will. He wants to give you the will of Jesus. Jesus said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Amen. 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 All right. So let's, let's, we got to hustle up. Verses 12 through 19. I'm just going to read some of this. 
It says this, it says, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sin. So we're already getting a little co a, a contrast and a comparison between the first man, Adam, and the last man, Jesus. And it said, and so what we were told is sin came in through the one man and death, because see, the wages of sin is death. And so death spread to all men. All men were born in sin, but also all men have put their sin into the pot. They used to say that I hear him play Bure when I was a kid. You didn't ante up. You didn't put your ante in. All man, listen, you were born with sin, but you anteed up. You put your own sin into the pot. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Ain't none of us in this place righteous. None are righteous. No, not one. That's what Romans chapter 3 says. Okay. So we're, we're, I don't think I have to convince you. Verse 13. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Basically, it's just saying that God wasn't keeping a tally of sin. Doesn't mean, because look what it says, yet, even though he wasn't keeping a tally of sin, yet death reigned from Adam to Moses. So even before the law was here, people still died because the wages of sin is death. Even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam. Isn't that interesting? You know, you... You know your sin is like Adam, but your sin is not like Adam. What do you mean? Well, your sin, whatever your sin is, is disobedience towards God. Adam's sin was disobedience towards God. But you know how your sin isn't like Adam's? Because you weren't the first one to sin. Right? Yeah. That's, that's, Adam's sin and transgression is different than every other human being's sin. He, Eve was deceived. Adam knew what he was doing. Don't quit blaming the woman. Man up. Come on, man. Man up. Be a man in your house. Lead your family in the ways of God. I'm starting with the preacher. Right? And, and women, submit to your husband. Because God put it in place. We love the word of God. So we want to learn the word of God. And husbands, love your wives like Jesus loved the church and gave himself for her hung naked in the noonday sun for his bride. Help us, Lord. Jesus. All right. So he says, um, yet death reigned, but verse 15, but the free gift, all right, Jesus is right. Uh, listen, you don't even know what the gift is yet, but I got to tell you in the King James Version, five times in these verses, the word gift, gift is used. Yes. And we don't learn until 17 what the gift is. The free gift is not like the trespass, for if many... Oh, look, I, I went too fast on verse 14. Sorry. Look at this. Was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. So Adam was a type of Jesus. But in this sense, Adam's sin entered into the world and caused all man to become sin. Jesus's gift allowed righteousness to be yes. given to the whole human race. I'm not preaching universalism. You got to put your faith in Jesus and what he did for you on the cross in order for you to be a recipient of the gift that's been given to you. Amen? Amen. He says, but the free gift is not like the trespass for if many die, this is verse 15, through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace that one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded to many. Praise God. And the, in verse 16, and the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. Yes. The, one, the one act of disobedience spread like wildfire and caused sin to enter into the human race. But the one act of obedience by Jesus because he was the sinless one. He was the unleavened bread that came from heaven and he offered his sinless life as a sacrifice. That's good news for you and I. You can't, you'll never be able to do it in your own strength. Amen. He did it for you. Amen. And now he's giving you access to grace so that you can be empowered by the person of the Holy Spirit so that you can live free from the power and the dominion of sin so that you don't have to be the old person that you used to be. You don't have to. Now look at verse 17. He gives us the punchline. He tells us what it is, the gift. What is the gift you bought us, Lord? For if because of one 
man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. We learned in chapter one that he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, for in, the, in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. We learned in chapter three that Jesus is the manifest righteousness of God. Amen. We learned in chapter four that Abraham couldn't earn righteousness. And now we're learning in chapter five that righteousness is a free gift. But don't you know, whenever you get ready to buy some Christmas presents for somebody, somebody got to pay some money. The free. You give me a gift, it might be free to me, but it costs you something. Yes. The free gift of righteousness, it's a free gift, but somebody had to do Jesus. Paid for it. He paid for it with his life. Amen? All right, I'm closing with this. Singers, musicians. Look at verse 17. It says this. For because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man. Much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Verse 19. For as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Praise God. Verses 20 and 21. Now the law came to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, Grace abounded all the more. So that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know that word reign? It describes a, it describes a king. It describes the action of a king. And many times death is reigning in people's life because of sin. But I gotta tell you something that sin and death are not supposed to be your are not supposed to be your king. Amen. Jesus and his righteousness it is your king. Praise God. And you can allow Jesus' righteousness to rule and reign in your life as you submit to him by faith. And he will strengthen you. Praise God. I'm going to ask the singers to sing, sing us a song. Amen. And I want to encourage you to thank the Lord for his sacrifice. Amen. I know you already do, but it's not going to hurt to give him some more glory. To thank him for his sacrifice and to thank the Father. That he was sitting for us. We give you glory.